welcome everybody to the last session of the summit. So <laughs> you probably had information overload, so we'll try to keep this uh, fairly quick. We'll leave a little bit of time for some questions. My name is Chadi. I'm from Nuage Networks from Nokia, and with me is Ramesh from Accenture and Kyle from Red Hat. Uh, the topic of discussion today is basic, basically building a multi-van SD-WAN lifecycle management and automation uh, platform. So what we've seen from enterprises over the course of the last several years is enterprises are demanding a little bit more flexibility, self-serve, on-demand <coughs> dynamicness. And in, es in essence, what's, uh, what's being offered to them in most cases, or what was being offered to them, uh, were services that were either fixed, manual, it takes weeks and weeks to deliver, and very static. So what that translates to is basically they're expecting an order and get, and what they're really getting is an order and wait. And what we're talking about here is the networking element, basically, of their infrastructure, right? So typically networks have been uh, very static, very manual, uh, lots of manual configurations, but their expectation from application consumability is I want to order and get it and not order and wait. And it, essentially what SD-WAN provides is a mechanism by which they could order and get, uh, but it also gives them the flexibility of connecting users uh, to applications in any location on any type of cloud. So whether it's a public cloud, whether it's a private cloud, whether it's uh, an HQ, a branch office, et cetera. So the enterprise needs are really being addressed in a very dynamic, flexible, self-serve, on-demand way with the right SD-WAN solution. So the concept, uh, sorry, the, 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 the presentation today will talk a little bit more about how uh, the framework that we've worked together with Accenture and Red Hat helps address this and makes the SD-WAN more consumable uh, in a complete end-to-end -end story. So I'll hand this over to Ramesh, who will talk about the next several slides and the platform. Good afternoon again. So to get to kind of the nirvana that we're talking about, we, we kind of have to take a look at what's the situation today. And <clears throat> what we have, if you look at the you know, excellent SD-WAN solutions, such as from Nuage Networks, you have a pretty complex, uh, rich but complex feature set compared to what service providers have traditionally offered in terms of legacy connectivity solutions. And as a result of that, if any of you have worked with service providers, these solutions need to plug into a fairly complex back office system, which includes things like ordering, billing, fulfillment, assurance monitoring systems. These are fairly complex systems. So, when you try to integrate you know, what is a fairly agile solution with APIs, as you'll see, consumable APIs, but once it goes to the back office and you're talking about end-to-end -end integration all the way from a customer portal through the back office to the SD-WAN kind of core solution, it, you're talking about, you're seeing feature development times uh, of six to nine months. The same thing is also reflected in service delivery. So if you're trying to turn up uh, a new brand site a new retail site, everything is a kind of white glove managed service experience, which is taking anywhere from one to two months. So how do we kind of get from here to what we're talking about, kind of self-service, on-demand, you know, very flexible and agile uh, automation platform, if you will. So our mission in short is to kind of simplify and, and shorten the whole development cycles. And the key there, if you look at the back office systems, the service fulfillment or configuration, the idea is, is really to focus the back office on what you want to do and not how you want to do it. So this is kind of the notion of intent-driven configuration. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to provision a VPN service, a firewall service? What is it you're trying to do, but not so much the mechanics of how you do it? So provide kind of an integration and abstraction layer that isolates kind of the service layer from the actual uh, networking that 
uh, does what you, you know, what service you're trying to uh, activate. The other <clears throat> important system is inventory. Traditionally, inventory systems were complex when they were managing like router switches. They kept very detailed track of every device, where was it, what software load was it, you know, uh, and all the history. But now we have the opportunity with, you know, uh, some of the layers and, and newer solutions underneath is to have more of a federated inventory model where you store only information at you know, service metadata level at the, at the back office layer and then you query on demand your network which is the source of truth to get you know, the real time dynamic information. So all of this really simplifies shortens development cycles because you're not trying to replicate everything at multiple layers and that, that always creates you know, more friction and, and more time when you're trying to bring new features to market quickly. The other piece is as you're trying to roll out all of this you know, software automation from concept to production, the idea of, of DevOps is to basically automate kind of the whole integrate, build, test, deploy cycle of all of these components. So you can not only get the benefits of the automation, but also get it to market faster. And then in terms of shortened time to revenue, I was talking about you know, moving away from traditional, more paper-based ordering to kind of a self-service digital card type of experience where end customers can order the services they want through this portal, and then all of that flows through kind of your automation platform. So kind of getting in a little bit more deeper, what we see is kind of these three uh, pillars of uh, key features that we need to have in the platform. So first is from this uh, service standpoint for end customers is to have kind of a digital uh, product catalog uh, that your end customers can choose whatever services they want. In fact, they could even compose new services out of building blocks that you have. Uh, a self-service capability, so kind of your Amazon cloud type of experience. And then you get to the actual configuration automation control aspects of features. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, you kind of have a multi-vendor foundation where you can uh, work with, with different solutions, provide full automated lifecycle management of the service all the way from the initial creation, any changes you might want to do to you know, potential termination, and all of it driven with open source. Uh, <clears throat> once you have provided kind of the uh, self-service capability, you provide the con automated configuration, then you need to operationalize and manage the service as it's running. It gets us to the kind of care side of it. The whole idea is it's self-monitoring systems, uh, self-learning uh, from events and activities in the network and then tuning the network autonomously to affect actions such as healing or tuning for higher performance, things like that. How do we realize all these features? Basically, we have this platform starting with the digital enterprise experience, the portal, omni-channel portal, to the programmable platform, which is what we'll focus on, what are the key pieces of that. All of this running on a virtualized infrastructure such as OpenStack, coupled with intelligent operations. So with that, let me kind of get into the the details of the platform, it essentially consists of three layers. At the highest layer is really a canonical or general SD-WAN service model and orchestration. So as I said before, it's kind of the what are you trying to do? I'm trying to create a VPN service, I'm trying to create a firewall service, WAN optimizer. All of that provided with an open source um, <coughs> project called uh, Open Network Automation Platform. That in turn is enabled by the next layer, which is the Ansible kind of network automation layer. And this abstracts the service from the actual network configuration. Uh, this enables you to really get that you know, clear separation between what you're trying to do and how you do it. And the last but not least piece is the SD-WAN solution. In this case, a partner working with Nuage Networks which really does and you know, provides the, the guts of how do you realize 
that SD-WAN service. Um, so the actual network devices and, and the management of those devices. So with that, let me, we'll, we'll just walk you through all the different, you know, the three pieces of it. So let me hand it back to, to Cherry here. Thank you, Ramesh. So as Ramesh mentioned, basically, uh, we, the, the, the SD-WAN platform has to be fully consumable. Uh, and what I'll do here is I'll walk through basically the, the, the Nuage platform, the Nuage solution um, at a very high level um, and talk about basically how we achieve connectivity. So the main pillars of the, of the SD-WAN solution, of the Nuage solution, are really uh, giving the enterprise or the service provider, giving the customer a single platform that allows them to connect users and applications anywhere. Uh, so when you really look at you know, how we achieve that, uh, without getting into all of the, 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 the details, we have a single infrastructure that in essence programs endpoints that can reside either in a private cloud on-prem, uh, in a wide area network or a branch, or in the public cloud. Uh, but the key to a consumable SD-WAN solution is also to provide uh, built-in functionality. So as Ramesh mentioned, as part of the ecosystem, uh, there are certain functions that are built into the platform, but it's also about partnering with the right security partners or the right WAN op partners or the right uh, IDS, IPS partners, for example. Um, and the platform is very consumable in the sense that you could onboard any type of third-party application onto the platform, and the same single infrastructure allows you to basically consume and service chain or redirect traffic from, uh, say, a branch to a firewall seamlessly. So all of that is consumable by API. So you got all of the, the flexibility and the capability of controlling the traffic within the network, leveraging a single uh, API, basically, where everything is consumable from that API. Um, and on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about you know, the Nuage, and specifically the Nuage API. So everything is open source in terms of the API. Uh, there are different ways of consuming the API. There's many wrappers. All of it exists on GitHub. Um, and in that GitHub, you will see that there's plugins for all sorts of things, uh, such as you know, cloud forms. Even our own UI uh, basically leverages the APIs and makes calls to our own API. But uh, as third-party cloud management systems such as OpenShift, OpenStack, uh, cloud forms, all of this is consumable by our API. Um, and as mentioned, there's different types of wrappers around the API that can be consumed. For the purpose of this presentation, a lot of it is uh, developed around Ansible um, and basically how Ansible is being consumed. And uh, I'll hand it over to Kyle who will talk a little bit more about how Ansible makes consuming this platform a lot more simple um, with a lot more flexibility. Thanks. So uh, just as a quick show of hands, has anyone previously worked with Ansible here? Okay, a couple. And so hopefully you attended one or two other sessions on it this week, but that's great. So uh, for the rest of you, this is kind of a quick introduction. And so Ansible's key focus, um, uh, it's an automation language that we acquired uh, a few years ago. And the focus on that is actually on simplicity, right? So when we focus on simplicity with this tool set, it's intended to help perform automation and larger orchestrations for teams that may not have previously had any background in doing that. And so some of the barriers to entries we've seen over the years on that is that you have to have deep level technical expertise and the ability to script or program against that. And so Ansible takes a different approach and our focus there is really on um, delivering a simple, easily readable and easily consumable tool set and so most users, uh, when they interact with Ansible, they're writing a, a single YAML document or a series of YAML documents, so key and value pair. And ultimately, all they have to worry about is just this little document on the left-hand side, the Ansible playbook. On the back end, Ansible uses Python to leverage a bunch of different tool sets. And in this case, with Nuage, it uses um, the Nuage module to interact with the API. Now, not all modules are created equal, but one of the things I'll say that's been really great about the, the Nuage tool set here is that let's say you write a series of playbooks like as we did in this, in this setup. Well, you have to specify the API version, and if something changes on the back end, Ansible will let you immediately modify that variable. You can substitute in the version, change versions to have 
uh, it made the proper calls in the back end so that you don't have to worry about it. So all the API endpoints um, that you might normally interact with can sort of be abstracted away and it's a single value that you can ultimately replace and continue moving on, right? So you don't have to check and review all your scripts as you, as you did in the past with Ansible. And so the whole idea here is that uh, when it's interacting with an API, you don't want to focus on every and single API call uh, you might have to write. So, you know, if you do a lot of scripting in your current day to day, you might be experienced with having to focus on one endpoint and then another and then another, making sure that all that stuff is uh, correctly in order. And Ansible's focus is to provide simplicity around that interaction. So we focus on tasks, what you need to do, and however many API calls are on the back end for it to accomplish that is kind of hidden and abstracted away, and it makes it a lot easier for just an individual who has maybe you know, some networking expertise or a familiarity with the API to just start writing against that API without having to write a ton of additional code. Now, <coughs> excuse me, for us, what we did here is we focus on Ansible Tower as well as the core language. So Ansible Tower, if, you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is how we operationalize and move Ansible, the core language, into enterprise frameworks. And part of, a big point and a big part of that is really focused on the API. So you see in the demo in a little bit here that we're gonna interact with the Ansible Tower, but most of the calls we're gonna make aren't actually from the Ansible interface, right? We're gonna focus on a self-service portal that ultimately everything gets orchestrated from in the back end. So Ansible here becomes really more of an orchestration layer and it kind of sits right in between the other two offerings, so the, the customized uh, interface that Accenture created and the new Azure APIs to perform all the work that's necessary and make sure that it gets done smoothly. And so rather than doing one-off um, types of orchestration where you might have you know, one API call here, one over there, Tower lets you aggregate all that stuff, and so when you make a call there, it gets forwarded both back to the, the original point of call and also out to the, um, any type of logging service on a southbound end, right? So if you have uh, you know, Splunk or Sumo Logic or another logging system at the end of that, you can get full accountability on what's occurring and a clear response on what's happening as well. So I'll let uh, Ramesh talk a little more about the, the larger platform as well. So just kind of trying to, to build up to, to the whole solution here. So the next piece I want to talk about briefly is, is the uh, open network automation platform. Uh, this is really a next-gen uh, back office system that, uh, as you can see there, a lot of the key large service providers across the globe are beginning to adopt um, as kind of the, the framework for their back office going forward. And it comprises key capabilities, you know, starting the left side, product designs. So I talk about kind of this digital catalog of services. So to be able to have kind of these building blocks of services, but then be able to compose new services uh, as needed. And then going to the runtime is really the orchestration of those services. So how do you go and actually activate those services on the network, coupled with a dynamic inventory? And this is you know, not a static physical box world where you put a box in a given place and it stays there. Everything is, is agile. You spin it up in data center, so keeps track of uh, where you have different pieces of your service running. And all of that coupled with policy and, and assurance so you can do the intelligent operations that I talked about earlier. So if you kind of put all of these pieces together that you heard about, so you have kind of the, the digital experience, the portal, self-service portal on top. You have the service orchestration layer in the middle and then you have the Ansible kind of integration layer to the Nuage SD-WAN solution. If you look on the right-hand side, the concept on the right is, is really kind of what I talked to you is the what. So you're talking about basically the, the service design here, a branch CPE, essentially a, a multi-port device, with some LAN ports, WAN ports, and you define at the service level what kind of operations you can do on that branch. I can create a new branch, I can modify some parameters with respect to the branch and services, or I can terminate the branch. And <clears throat> the orchestration essentially saying, okay, what's, what, what operation do I want to do on the branch, and what is the playbook, as Kyle talked about, that does that operation for me, right? And it's really keeping it very simple at the service model orchestration layer and letting you know, the, the uh, <clears throat> platform underneath kind of do all the nitty-gritty detail work about how to actually activate the service. 
So this is kind of a use case flow uh, that we'll see more vividly in the demo. But essentially, user kind of comes into the self-service portal, and let's say I want to start up a new retail site. Comes in and say, I want to create a new branch, fills out a few parameters, goes through to the orchestration layer. Uh, in case it's a complex service order, it breaks it up into multiple pieces, the SD-WAN piece. Uh, basically takes the parameters in the branch, populates a template, sends it to the Ansible playbook, which calls a NOAA solution. Voila, your branch is up, and you can see kind of the new branch up on your self-service portal. So this is one of the use cases we'll show you kind of in the live demo uh, with all of these pieces working together. The second use case is kind of looking at the life cycle. So I created a new branch. I might want to modify it. So uh, you know, you've gone a few months and you see that your bandwidth requirements of the branch have substantially increased. And so I had some initial setup at the branch. Now I want to increase the bandwidth. Same thing, you go to your self-service portal, says I want to increase the bandwidth of this branch. The, layer, the orchestration layer go and you know, uh, fetches the details of that particular branch, makes the modification in the template, sends the new template, and then the Ansible playbook goes and modifies the branch. So we'll just show all of this kind of working for real, so it's not just PowerPoint slides. So this is essentially the, the portal on top. You would come in as a customer. It's a multi-tenant kind of system, so each customer sees a view of their own network. So it comes in, it logs in, and then this particular customer uh, sees a view where there's kind of the central Nuage controller and two branch sites. So this kind of current setup that he has. You can go and look. We talked about this federated inventory model. So this is not stored at the orchestration layer. It goes queries. Uh, the Nuage system says, okay, you know, some information about the IP, software version, this is the inventory piece at that particular site. Here is kind of your product catalog service template, if you will. I have a few different ones that I can pick. Um, I'll pick the, you know, the simple, I want to set up a, a Nuage uh, device at the site. It's two ports with one LAN, one WAN port. You can have, you know, a, a menu of options. And then I go basically uh, to this dashboard. I say I want to create a new site. Right? It's as simple as you hit Add Sites, pick the template, the configuration that you want for that site. You fill in a few parameters, just uh, name of the site, um, WAN IP, LAN IP, a few, you know, few parameters, what's the location. And then you hit, you, know, you submit your order. Site bandwidth, the site location, then you hit submit on that. So this really contra contrasts to what Chaddy was talking about today. All of this is done paper ordering. Um, so this you know, really brings the self-service. So what that does now is kind of runs through the stack. You can see these are the playbooks in the Ansible tower that uh, Kyle talked about. So it's kind of gone through the stack called the Create Branch Playbook because I'm trying to create a new site. You can see that playbook is running. It's called the Nuage Solution through that uh, VSP um, library that uh, we talked about before. And then now I can go back to <coughs> my uh, UI dashboard. I can see there's a new site three now. I can see that as well on my map view. So there's a new site in Seattle. It's as simple as this, that you've created a new site through the to the portal, uh, and then I want to show you the second use case, which is I want to go to an existing site. And I want, <clears throat> so I'm going to go to site two, and it has currently a bandwidth of 50 megabits per second. I need more bandwidth at the site. It's as simple as pull down menu. I'm going to change the site bandwidth to, from 50 to 250. I hit up, update, and Again, goes through, runs, you know, I, I don't need to know the details of how exactly I do that. In the Nuage platform, the Ansible layer hides it. 
I just call the playbook, say modify site bandwidth, and it does all the magic underneath. And now I have you know, modified the uh, bandwidth of that site. So you can see now it's you know, 250 megabits there on that site. And then the final one, the new site that I created, you know, six months down the road, I don't need it anymore. Again, simple, go in, I say I want to delete this branch site. Goes through the same kind of uh, set of actions and I have another playbook, which is delete branch. So it really becomes at that service management orchestration layer, all I need to know is I have Ansible playbooks that says create branch, modify branch, delete branch. Keeps it really very simple, like very flexible, and I can easily you know, adapt and evolve it as you know, I want to accommodate new services and features. I was gonna say, I mean, one of the, the big things and the kind of key takeaways there is when we focus on uh, using Ansible Tower to interact with self-service portals, right? You, you can see very easily someone who has a self-service access can immediately modify this network that the idea of having to wait for a network administrator to provision this and fill out, a, well, for you to fill out a paper form to go and request it, return it, wait that manual process where it's just an individual is ultimately eliminated because what Ansible Tower allows you to do is set specific guidelines for what can and cannot be done. It provides that flexibility so you can do okay, what my bandwidth is going to be in one location versus the other, and then pass that on to Nuage. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and control uh, simply by writing your playbooks in, a, in the correct fashion and then ultimately leveraging Tower to uh, provide access to them. So. Exactly, so you could customize the playbooks based on the offering that you have uh, and consume the API in a way that makes it address your business needs versus having to build uh, and you could do this on the fly without having to build all of these APIs into like these monolithic plugins that need to be updated time and time again. So you could f very easily say a new feature comes out in Nuage, you upgrade your Nuage platform, you don't need to upgrade the entire infrastructure, you simply update the playbook and now all of a sudden you got access to all of these new uh, features and consuming the APIs in a very simple manner versus rewriting your entire plugin that plugs into this and having to upgrade the entire system, right? So the flexibility that you get with the Ansible uh, integration allows you to consume uh, in a more agile uh, way and address your business needs a lot faster. So we kind of talked about the automation as far as the service configuration activation. Um, we kind of use the same approach on, on the <clears throat> bringing features kind of from the planning development through to production side. Kind of the same concept is used you know, in a slightly different way. So the <clears throat> challenge I said before is we want to bring you know, new features, new capabilities. We want to be able to rapidly iterate and bring th these uh, capabilities to market. So you have this software stack that you know, every time you know, there's a new feature, maybe you update the, just the playbook, but I still need to go and test all of that all of the old features work to be able to do that in automated fashion, right? From whether it's kind of some small patches that you did to minor releases to, to major releases, you want to be able to you know, just have a pipeline where you can push a button and say, I changed this one component or this one piece, but be able to kind of instantiate and test and deploy all of the whole solution in a completely automated fashion. So we have uh, kind of a companion platform uh, called Telco Cloud Automation Platform. The idea is, is to really look at that whole uh, life cycle from the you know, design of the solution to the testing verification to ongoing patching, hardening, to continuous delivery deployment where you know, you're doing continuous new releases and features into the field. And all of that is supported by uh, this platform, which is a combination of a number of pre-integrated open source components that addresses various parts of the life cycle from the software uh, versioning configuration management to the integration of all of the software components to the automated testing, um, both regression testing as well as testing of new features to continuous deployment of these uh, capabilities into the production environment. So this is kind of how the pipeline looks like. So anytime there is, you know, whether it's a small patch or a major release, uh, we instantiate all of the components uh, kind of starting on the left side. 
uh, we configure whatever the set of test use cases or topology are, um, and then kind of simulate, you know, let's say, user devices connecting to branch sites, which exercise that use case and that topology. And then we do um, the validation of the use case configuration, so it could be performance tests, non-functional uh, performance, security, or functional tests. And all of that is, is kind of automated through robot tests and, and other kind of testing frameworks. And if all of these tests pass, then you push the software to production. And this is the constant kind of uh, iteration where you can rapidly uh, cycle through you know, new features and capabilities and push it to production uh, in a highly automated fashion, ensure that you know, what you're pushing to the field is highly secure, reliable and, and bringing the latest features to market. So with that, hopefully I've kind of shown you, um, you know, through the demonstration and, and the presentation, it's kind of a model-driven fulfillment and automation solution that uh, helps to rap reduce development and delivery times for new you know, WAN networking services. And also shown you a DevOps-based uh, test automation framework uh, for SD-WAN services that enable you know, uh, rapid delivery of, of new features with high solution quality and reliability quickly from concept to production. <clears throat>